our floor price for the gas is 25 cents per thousand square. So you know, what that means is that any investor will need to do a net back to say, how am I going to make my profit depending on the product? One of the key um, driving principles of the NGFCP is uh, number one, we will try as much as possible not to disrupt the EMP operations while we're bringing in third party investors. And these third party investors we're bringing in will pass through a seeding process for them to um, be qualified to be able to work with the EMP industry. And so we came up with guidelines developed by the Department of Petroleum Resources to make sure that these competent third parties, of course, meet up with health, safety, and other regulatory requirements. Now, apart from that, um, these third parties equally had to demonstrate project uh, management experience. And the technologies they're bringing in must have been um, uh, deployed in commercial applications. So, which is why I was, I, was trying, I was struggling to understand why the issue of infrastructure, like I did mention, we did a diagnostics, and we said, yes, pipeline is the most preferred option for transportation of gas, but globally, there are scalable technologies, and I'm sure most of the technology providers are seated here in this forum. Last year, February, we scrubbed close to 40 different technologies, scalable technologies that you don't necessarily need uh, pipelines to move your uh, 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 flag as a uh, product to your desired of takers and customers. Now, coming back to how the third party investors will have a proper handshake with the producers, which we know the producers have a, uh, have a very high standard in terms of safety and of course not to distort the operations. We um, have what we call um, a connection agreement that the third parties will sign with the producer. And that connection agreement is to, number one, incentivize the producers for bringing this uh, gas from subsurface to offshore as part of uh, the, the making them partners in progress. The other bit um, uh, we are working on is that for the third party investors, we try to make sure that the gas flare volume is bankable. Bankable in the sense that um, based on the regulations, we'll make the producers give us some form of guaranteed flare volumes so that these competent third parties can take it to the bank. Because, I mean, if you don't have um, a guaranteed flare volume over uh, a period of 10, 15 years, then there's no return on investment and no investor will want to come in there. Okay. And um, we all know that gas flaring is uh, a tremendous waste of natural resources. Um, this is a natural resource that could be added to the energy mix we're talking about, just like with society and uh, uh, diamond, uh, my other speaker just now. So. Um, uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, in his capacity as a petroleum minister as well, attended the COP21 in 2015 and committed to reducing um, uh, greenhouse gas emission and captured gas flare as one of the uh, key uh, low hanging fruits as part of the nationally determined uh, contribution, again, a contribution to the petroleum industry in the reduction of greenhouse gas. Now, um, in a country where uh, we have about 12.5 percent people, that have direct access to electricity, and globally about 1.1 percent of uh, uh, the world population do not have access to uh, steady for electricity supply. And most of these numbers are coming from sub-Saharan West Africa that we're in, and of course um, developing Asia. Now, for West Africa, that number is around 588 million people, and yet we flare gas in this country. Um, globally, there are around 16,000 uh, gas flare locations in 90 countries, including this one that we're living in. Now, in Nigeria, we have around 178 gas flare locations, and we flare around 888 million standard cubic feet of gas per day. Now, let me put that into context. Our power utilization is around 800 million scoff per day, which means we can actually double our power uh, uh, utilization. Now, in the industrial sector, we use around 450 million scoff of gas per day, which means that could be triple. But yet, we flare this gas. So, which means every other day we burn billions and billions of dollars. And if we're able to harness that in terms of revenue loss, uh, in 2017, our records from the Department of Petroleum Resources tells us that we flare around 224 billion cubic cubic of gas which in terms of revenue loss is around 1 billion US dollars. Now, we contribute to um, uh, CO2 emission around 22 million tons. If we're able to harness that 
and convert that in the carbon market, it gives us around 500 million US dollars. And then this gas that will flare, if we're able to tap it, it could equally power just like the energy man. It could take it to run uh, two, three energy trains. It could power, it could generate 3,000 megawatts of electricity. Dio here sitting next to me, if, it's, if, if we're able to harness that, it will give us around 600,000 metric tons of LPG, which will give around 6 million households cleaner energy through LPG. And all of that we just waste every day for the past number of years. Now, yes indeed, we've recorded some uh, successes in the past 10, 12 years, thanks to NNPC and uh, the joint venture partners, to around a 70% decline in terms of gas. But it is still worrisome. One billion BCF of gas flare annually is a lot. And that is enough to take care of a whole lot of businesses. So the Nigerian gas flare commercialization program in the Ministry of Petroleum Resources is the federal government's strategy to eliminate gas flaring in our oil fields and of course to uh, contribute to uh, multiplier and of course development in the Niger Delta and of course positively impact the Nigerian economy. <coughs> so government in its wisdom wrote on the existing regulation, the Petroleum Act, Section 9 and Section 11, which empowers the President and of course the Minister for Petroleum, of State, Petroleum to say in the interest of the public he will come up with regulations. So we couched a regulation in the new regulation which is called the Flare Gas Prevention of Waste and Pollution Regulations 2018 to underpin the implementation of the Nigerian Gas Flare Commercialization Program. Now what that regulation does is that it gives the government the power to invest, inv invite competent third parties that are technical and commercially strong and viable to take these flares from the producers and of course have a connection agreement where these third party investors will harness this gas flare, this gas that has instead of been flared and convert them to what we call flare gas to market products using flare gas to market technology. Now one big concern people have with respect to the gas flare considering the danger to terrain is that there is positive of infrastructure. But when we did a diagnostics of the gas flare utilization project and options, we found out there are scalable, skid mounted, plug and play, virtual pipeline kind of technologies that you can deploy that you don't even need to construct a long stretch of pipelines. Now, apart from that, yes indeed, you can equally um, key into existing pipelines in case your flare location that you bid it for is close to a, a, a maybe an NPC um, pipelines. So these are all we are seeking to reverse. And again, the issue around gas, if you look at the screen, um, I, I don't know if you see what the, the top flare potentials, everything about gas flare is negative. I don't want to talk about the detrimental human health uh, impact, the environmental impact. And remember, gas flare is one of the key drivers of air pollution. And air pollution does not know the rich, not the poor. Does not know the old or the young. Just like when flooding comes, and all about all this does is that it contributes to global warming and climate change. And so we're in this together, and that is why the <coughs> federal government has taken this step to say enough is enough, and we're taking this gas flare down, and it is going to go down. Thank you. <laughs>